You're here because you wanna know the best places to live in Mexico, and I'm gonna tell you. For the best advice about moving to Mexico, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alex, and I moved to Mexico from the US in 2017. I've called Querétaro home ever since. In today's video, I'm sharing my opinion as to the best places to live in Mexico. To give you another perspective, I reached out to some foreigners living in the various cities that I've included in this rundown, and they graciously shared their perspectives, their thoughts on why the place that they are living is one of the best places to live in Mexico. This video isn't gonna give you every single thing that you need to know about every single city on the list, but it is a great starting point for your own research. If you are interested for a deeper dive in one of the cities on this list, be sure to ask in the comments below, and perhaps that's a video that we can accommodate in the future. First up, Querétaro. Located in central Mexico, approximately three hours northwest of Mexico City, Querétaro is home to over one million and a half inhabitants. It's the fastest growing city in the country. When Taylor and I moved to Querétaro back in 2017, we had never visited. We moved here sight unseen. And I have got to say, being so happy, feeling so at home in a city that we'd only heard of a few months before actually moving here, it, it feels like winning the jackpot. There is a lot to love about Querétaro, but a few things that really stand out to me, a few reasons I think it is such a great place to live, one of the best places to live in Mexico is the fact that it is centrally located, which makes it great for traveling around the country. You're only three hours from Mexico City and the airport there, which is the biggest airport in Latin America, and you can use that as a jumping off point for a lot of adventures. Querétaro is frequently recognized as one of the safest cities in Mexico. And along with safety, well, I'm not sure if these things really go hand in hand, but it's also one of the cleanest cities in Mexico. Here in Querétaro, in the city center, in the Centro Histórico, we have trash pickup six nights a week. Where we live in the Centro Histórico, it really does feel like a pueblo. There's a lot of charm with the uh, colonial architecture, the cobblestone streets, but then if you need big city am amenities, those are here too. If you are interested in learning more about Querétaro, this video is a really, really great place to start. I answer some frequently asked questions about the city, and I'm also gonna go ahead and put together a Querétaro playlist. Since I live here, I've made lots of videos about the city, and you can check that out if Querétaro is a contender for you. Number two, Puerto Escondido. Located on the Pacific coast in the Mexican state of Oaxaca, Puerto Escondido has a population of around 60,000 inhabitants. Famous for its surf, in English, its name translates to hidden port. For a long, long time, I said that I could never live in Puerto Escondido, and a lot of that had to do with the infrastructure, specifically the internet. Beach towns in Mexico are not known for having great internet. Understandably. However, my opinion on the livability of Puerto Escondido has changed a lot in the past year. When I was there in December, Taylor and I stayed in an Airbnb with super, super fast internet. And then my friend Luis, who spent a few weeks there in 2021, told me that she was finding really, really quality connections, quality internet connections at cafes all over town. Here's what my friend, wedding photographer, and the co-founder of Puerto Food Tours, Alex Krokov, has to say about Puerto Escondido, where he's lived for the last six years. Puerto has its own magic. Puerto has its own vibe that it's in incomparable. Uh, the nature is gorgeous, beautiful. It has waves. Puerto is relatively small. It's not super small, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a small town. But really, that could offer you basically everything from restaurants to airport. So we're an hour away from Mexico City. So it's like it's a small town, but it has like all the possibilities that a bigger town, bigger city would offer. It's very laid back. It's very open. In many other places where I've lived, I was still feeling myself a foreigner most of the time. 
and here I do feel feel home. It's special. Number three, Morelia. The capital of the state of Michoacan in central Mexico, Morelia is home to around 850,000 people. The Spanish originally named the city Valladolid, but the victors renamed it following the Mexican War for Independence. It says a lot about a city when you arrive at night in the rain and still instantly fall in love. Morelia first popped up on my radar when one of our Move to Mexico members said he was planning on living there. I'll let Scott tell you what he loves about Morelia. I knew that I didn't want an enormous large city, so I was looking for slightly smaller cities in the central highland plains of Mexico. It is a city filled with classical Spanish colonial architecture, um, beautiful people, incredible food, a rich culture and history, and just an incredible place to sort of set up home. When I got to meet Scott for the first time back in September, the first time in person, he told me that Morelia is home to a larger than expected community of foreigners. And he also shared that the city's international airport makes travel super convenient. In the short time that I was there, I found the prices of food, drinks, and accommodation to be lower than they are in Querétaro. Regarding safety, the city of Morelia is excluded from the U.S. State Department's Mexico travel advisories about the state of Michoacán. Number four, Guadalajara. The capital of the state of Jalisco in western Mexico, Guadalajara has a population of around 5 million inhabitants. It's a major Latin American tech hub and financial center. If you like the idea of living in a big city in Mexico but aren't quite sold on Mexico City, then Guadalajara could be for you. Guadalajara is the second largest city in Mexico and offers all those big city living amenities. Plus, it's only four hours from the coast. My friend Luis and her partner Mao, who you've seen in my vlogs and videos on this channel, recently moved to Guadalajara. In fact, at the time of this recording, they are moving into their new apartment. And Luis shared some of her thoughts about her new city. It's the only other city that I've been to in Mexico that has like that Mexico City vibe that is in Mexico City. It's like there's a lot of art here, like a lot of exhibits, um, like rotating exhibits, architecture. It's like a very artsy city because I think it fosters that because it's pretty cheap. Um, so there is kind of like spaces for that here. Like people are super open minded, like nobody judges anyone. It's not a snobby city at all. It's not like a fresa city at all, at least the centro. It's well connected. It's close to the beach. So it's like one of the few, I think, like big cities in Mexico that is so close to a beach, right? Like it's three hours from the beach and I think it's gonna be quicker soon. Like it's definitely a night city, almost more, almost too much for me. <laughs> um, like it's nightlife, nightlife, nightlife. There's like bars, dive bars, clubs, after hours, raves. Like it's definitely, the city comes alive at night. If you're liking this video, if you are finding it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up right now because that lets YouTube know that I've gotta spread this baby to more people. Number five, La Paz. Located on the Baja California Peninsula, La Paz has experienced significant growth since the 2000s and reports a population of approximately 290,000 inhabitants. For its weather, beaches, and proximity to the U.S., Baja California has long been a popular destination for U.S. residents looking to relocate to Mexico. Now, I'll be honest with you, of all these cities on this list, La Paz is the only place where I have not personally spent time. But I have heard so many good things about it and am so eager to visit it myself that I had to include it in this roundup. I reached out to my good friend, Laura Bronner, the author of A Guide to Baja California Sur, for her thoughts on La Paz. La Paz and most of the cities around Baja California Sur are perfect for outdoor lovers. If you love hiking, bike riding, sailing, surfing, swimming, <laughs> and living the majority of your days in the sunshine, then La Paz is an awesome place to call home. It's a small but growing city with great medical care, a beautiful downtown with cool bars and restaurants, and it's close to all of the more popular tourist places like Todos Santos and Los Cabos, but it allows you to come back home to a much quieter and more laid back place. In March, I am so excited to announce Laura will be answering questions about her experience living in La Paz and traveling around Baja California Sur as part of a virtual event for the Move to Mexico membership. If you're interested in attending, check out the link in the description below for more about the Move to Mexico membership. Number six, Merida. 
Located in the northwest part of the Yucatan Peninsula, Merida is home to just over 1 million people. Much of Merida's architecture from the colonial period through the 18th and 19th centuries is still visible in the Centro Historico today. Like Querétaro, Merida is often recognized as one of the safest places to live in Mexico. Now, while it is in the Yucatan Peninsula, which a lot of people associate with beaches, it's important to note that Merida is not located directly on the coast. It's set back a ways, about 40 minutes, and the closest beach is Progreso. One of the things that I like about Merida is that it's a big city, but not too big. There is a community of foreigners there, but the city itself is not quite as saturated as other places, other cities in the Yucatan Peninsula. It's still a good place to learn and use your Spanish. For a lot of people, a big selling point of Merida is the climate. Now it is hot, hot, hot year round and going hand in hand with that heat is humidity. So just something to keep in mind about this particular city in Mexico. If you can get down with the heat, if you can get down with the humidity, there is so much to see and do in the Yucatan Peninsula and Merida is a great jumping off point for those adventures. Number seven, Mexico City. Situated in the Valle de México, Ciudad de México is the sixth largest metropolitan area in the world with more than 21 million inhabitants. Founded by the Mexica, it is the oldest capital city in the Americas. When we were first planning our move to Mexico, I said, oh, I could never live in Mexico City. It's too big, too chaotic. But every time I've visited, it's only three hours from Querétaro, every time I've visited, my opinion has changed a little bit more and now, now I could definitely see myself calling Mexico City home. Mexico City really has it all. World-class restaurants, fabulous shopping, lively nightlife, over 150 museums. Digital nomads feel right at home in Mexico City with all the cafes and co-working spaces where they can set up office. And the city is full of transplants from all over Mexico, from all over the world. So it is really easy to make friends. One of those transplants, travel writer Jenny Hart has called Mexico City home for the past year. And here's what she has to say about the city. Even though it's this gigantic city, all of the neighborhoods, the colonias have, you know, this kind of small town community vibe. So it's really easy to find your favorite neighborhood places to get to know the people that live near you and plant roots and, and establish a sense of community. The dining is excellent. I tell people all the time that, you know, it's not common that you can go somewhere and have truly excellent street food, truly excellent fine dining, um, all of which is much more affordable than I'm used to, certainly in New York, but even most places in the States. The weather doesn't really change much by like, I don't know, more than 20 degrees Fahrenheit, really any time of the year. It's mild year round. I like that a lot. There's so much to see and look at and learn and do that you're really not going to run out of things. Number eight, Puebla. Located in East Central Mexico, Puebla has a population of more than 3 million inhabitants in its metropolitan area. It's home to many prestigious universities and the world's largest Volkswagen factory outside of Germany. You can't talk about Puebla without talking about volcanoes. Two giant ones separate the city from Mexico City, and one of those bad boys is still active. Hiking is a popular activity in Puebla, including hiking up volcanoes, and that makes this city a great spot for outdoors lovers. After your hike, you can fuel up with some mole. There's a big debate in Mexico whether mole originates in Puebla or Oaxaca, and I've gotta say, the mole that I had when I was in Puebla, wow, delicious. Puebla is the fourth largest city in Mexico, and because of its size, you can find quality medical care and English-speaking doctors. Number nine, San Miguel de Allende. A top tourist destination, San Miguel is a city in the central Mexican state of Guanajuato. Its population numbers around 174,000 inhabitants. The city was greatly important during Mexico's fight for independence from Spain. Both Mexicans and foreigners are like, are obsessed with San Miguel and for good reason. This colonial city is one of the most picturesque towns in all of Mexico. 
the climate, if you like a high desert climate, has warm days and cool nights for the majority of the year. I'm talking cool, cool nights. In fact, when I was there in January, I had to use a space heater and slept in flannel sheets. That cold. San Miguel is very, very, very popular with foreigners. In fact, some estimates put the foreigner community at between 20 and 25,000. Because it's so popular with foreigners living there and international tourists, that can definitely drive up prices, so something to keep in mind. Number 10, Oaxaca City. Situated in southwestern Mexico, the municipality of Oaxaca de Juarez is home to around 715,000 people. A short bus ride from the city center, the archaeological site of Monte Alban is a prehistoric city open to visitors. I spent a couple of weeks backpacking around Oaxaca back in 2018, and today it was one of the best experiences I've had in Mexico. I was actually in Oaxaca City for Dia de Muertos, which was just, wow, an incredible experience, something for your Mexico bucket list. Oaxaca City is located in the Sierra de Madre mountain range, which means a cooler climate by Mexican standards, of course. This is a great city for nature lovers who only need to leave the city limits for hiking trails, waterfalls, and if you're in the market for a real off the beaten path adventure, you've got to check out the Pueblos Van Comunados. I asked Katrin Schrimpf, a spiritual guide who's called Oaxaca home for more than three years, to share her thoughts, share her perspective on the city. Here's what she had to say. Here in Oaxaca, everything is about community, everything is about sharing and laughing together. It's a completely different vibe. Uh, Oaxaca is like a country by itself. All this influence from the Zapotec traditions or Mazatec uh, tradition. We have a lot of traditional medicine. No, it's full of curanderos or healers, shamans and plant medicine. And if you are into food, then Oaxaca is definitely the best place to live because there is such a big variety of traditional food. It's incredible. And everyone is putting so much heart and passion into the food that they are preparing. The costs of living, they are compared to other regions of Mexico are still relatively low. Number 11, Puerto Vallarta. A Mexican beach resort city in the state of Jalisco, Puerto Vallarta's population is estimated to be around 300,000. It burst onto the international tourism scene in the 1960s and 70s. There's a lot to love about Vallarta, including an international airport with direct flights to and from the U.S., and top-of-the-line medical care. Some of the best hospitals in Mexico are in Puerto Vallarta. Here's what longtime Puerto Vallarta resident Stephanie Kemker, she only recently relocated to Mexico City for her job with Guardian Health Insurance. She specializes in expat health insurance. Here's what Steph had to say about the three and a half years that she lived in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, I want to acknowledge that PV is one of the more expensive places to live in Mexico, but compared to other places around the world, um, it's quite inexpensive for, for Oceanside living. I also think it's a great place for couples. It's a great place to start a family because there's really good schools and a lot of other young families from all around the world. It's great for weekend exploration, like people who like to do long weekend trips. There's San Sebastian, San Pancho, Sayulita. Guadalajara is just a couple hours away. Like there's so many things to do. There's so many places to explore. It has a really big, relatively large population of people who are interested in things like yoga, doing retreats, biohacking, mental health. Like it's a really good community for people who are interested in wellness and really easy to network in that area of things. I would love to hear your thoughts about the cities included in this roundup, and I'd love to know what cities you'd include on your own list of the best places to live in Mexico. Let me know in the comments below. I'm Alex from BackpackingBrunette.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>